Good evening, Possibility War fans, and welcome back for our, our next adventure. This new one is called Journey to the Dark Heart. It is taking the fourth act of the Destiny map adventure and breaking it out into its own thing. The reason that we're breaking it out into its own thing is because it was completely incongruous with the first three acts of uh, Relics of Power 1, Part 1 I should say, the Destiny map. Uh, it just didn't fit and I think it was, was shoehorned in there to allow a, a somewhat of a transition so I'm going to use it as a transition and a completely different one act adventure. Uh, and tonight we'll be beginning that. Um, uh, there's going to be a lot of reading that goes on to kind of catch some things up. I'm going to make sure that everybody has their characters where they want them to be, etc. Uh, so that we can uh, move on and be comfortable with those characters. Um, I don't know how many weeks this uh, particular portion of the adventure is going to take, but I have Act 1 and uh, most of Act 2 of the following adventure, which is Relics of Power Part 2, The Possibility Chalice, ready to go. And I will continue to work on those as we're going along. It, it'll probably be several weeks, so I'll probably have most of that adventure completely done. Uh, by the time uh, we're, we're ready to be done with it all together. Okay, um, it has been 49 days since we ended the Heart of Ukon adventure. Now, we, we took a break and played a little bit of the One Ring. Uh, I felt like it was a fun adventure and it had a really good outcome, uh, but we didn't record it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to record those adventures anymore um, for the simple fact that I need to be able to have time to catch up on, on what we're doing here. It's been, it's been six weeks and I haven't put out video one for Torg because I'm trying to edit everything together and make sure that it, it comes out all right um, and and so it's not too short or not too long or anything like that. Um, all of that in mind you can hear the logins from all of the the, the players for our game. Uh, it's the usual suspects uh, plus Justin who's known as Nefrakim on Discord uh, and uh, Gordon who is G.R. Dell, um, are both returning with their characters, uh, uh, Katsumi Watanabe for Justin and uh, Darius Renault for uh, Gordon, uh, plus all the normal, you know, like I said, the, the normal uh, uh, suspects that we have going on here. So uh, we're going to go ahead and get into the one act adventure, Journey to the Dark Heart. And um, so. <laughs> What do you all remember? And and uh, uh, Aaron Deer Waystar, him, him, him. I'm going to start with you first. Uh, what do you remember from both the Relics of Power, or, uh, Relics of Power One Destiny map, and from Heart of Ukon, which was our most recent adventure? Uh, okay, so beginning with Relics of Power. We discovered the uh, the plot about uh, the uh, tablets, which had a home being a, a which started off with a home being attacked by ninjas. Uh, from there, we found the Sakura research facility. Sakura or cherry blossom? Name. Correct. <laughs> cherry blossom. Uh. I mean, I was saying you know, if Japanese, it would be Sakura, but <laughs> sure. Uh, yeah. So for the Cherry Blossom Research Facility, we broke in in the middle of the night. Uh, <laughs> we, you know, the uh, you know Remy and Cats, uh, well not Cats character, but uh, Andon. Andon. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. Uh, were, went down to the basement where they fought uh, samurai, if I remember correctly. They made a right old mess down there. Uh, while me, Peaches, and well, yeah, and uh, wasn't there Katsumi as well? Cat, uh, uh, no, or, Katsumi uh, was Katsumi was Sorry, not in uh, Destiny map. Right, it was uh, Nightwing or Nightbird, Nightwing, but uh, 
Yep, I bird, yeah. How uh, easily also, we forget. Yeah, electric. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not the greatest with me. You know what? You're doing uh, great. Yeah, so I hacked into the servers to get more information about the tablets. And we had to fight, the, you know, the guards. We set the building on fire. Then they decided to, like, to heck with it and blow up the building. And I jumped out the window to run away. The following uh, days, we then uh, found out the location of the dis dig site of where they were retrieving those uh, tablets. With uh, you no, know, then we so we traveled through the jungle because it was located within the living land to the dig site. After we knocked out a few guards, stole their clothes, and infiltrated the camp, we successfully uh, listened in to their you know finding of a tablet and then the and then the remaining tablets before we began battling them i one of us i'm pretty sure it was me who stole and grabbed the tablets and ran to the truck while the other one started causing trouble or i forget no you exactly how it went down I think you've got but it right. I guess I, yeah, got it right. I handed the tablets over to Peaches and uh, Rios. Uh, they started to get the truck ready. I said, just go. Ran back for uh, uh, the uh, Artorius, mm -hmm. our elfin mage. Who I was, he was being left behind, so I decided to, you know, be left behind with him. I was like, I was, you know, trying to save him. We were running through the camp. The uh, samurai attacked Golden and the uh, gray samurai. Rem, uh, sorry, uh, Remy's character ended up dying, <laughs> and I with a very high roll turned one the samurai who killed him into a ball of metal and gore which was pretty rad <laughs> mm -hmm. that was a pretty high uh, dice roll too yes and we got onto the ship we, you know that went on to the orosh adventure that ginger ran mm -hmm. the uh they were trying to w awaken that island whale, you know, the whale the size of an island. Uh, next stop, we went to that uh, Heart of Power or whatever it was you called it. Heart of Vukan. Heart of Vukan, in which we uh, are tasked with finding the old group that uh, went along in the uh, adventure. So we first met up with Katsumi on the beach, then uh, Dur you know, Darius with in the actual city itself. Oh, and uh, we met Toma in uh, the uh, Orosh adventure. Mm -hmm. So that's everyone meet, you know, be being met up. We entered the tower with the you know couple of good dice rolls. Uh, one was, you know, causing a distraction, uh, peeling away some Medinos. Another was, to act, you know, moving the crane over and crashing into the side of the crystalline tower. And then a final one to push the tower off the, the uh, crystal, you know, crystalline tower to mm -hmm. make, you know, they get it sealed off and they couldn't follow us mm -hmm. unless they broke in through the base, which they did eventually. We defeated One Eye down there. Successfully, kind of convinced the golem to kind of hand over its heart, and yeah, that's what I remember. Okay, all right. Uh, for for Ginger, before I I get to you, um, I I do I forgot that I I thought that the uh, Trail of the Dead came before the. Um, uh, I, I, 
I did. I forgot where it came, where where it went into. I thought it, became, it came before the uh, uh, other adventure, but I, I guess it didn't. So, do you want to describe that one and then anything else you remember from the end of Possibility, uh, the Destiny map up to the end of Heart of Ukon? So, what do you remember of the last adventure, which was your first with this group? Um, and how it might, you know, just tell me what you remember, please. Sure. Um, I was part of a group along with uh, uh, Kitsumi that had gone to investigate the Crystal Tower first. Unfortunately, most of our group was wiped out by the Adinos. And um, we, Kitsumi and myself, managed to join up with this group uh, in order to successfully retrieve the Eternity Shard that was within the golem at the base of the tower. Um, and then that's that's the the, the last that I, I was involved in. Oh, okay. All right. Well, then in that case, Catherine, what do you think? Oh. Uh, everybody's saying what I've recalled. I, I can't think of anything else. There's one thing that you did at the end of the Heart of Ukon adventure. Oh, I uh, managed to persuade the golem into giving us the, the eternity shard. Not only did you do a great persuasion, what helped you to make that great persuasion? Because of how well you rolled. Do you remember? I do not recall. Oh. Well, you gloried. That's right. That's right. If you if you look in if any of you look in your character journals under the journal tab in um, in Foundry, you will see that the uh, the glory event is listed in there. And of course, you're the only one who can access your own uh, your own character journal, but each of you has it in your character journal. I made sure to put it in all of them that, that participated. So uh, we, nice. we, yeah, yeah. Um, did uh, did you all want me to read that real quick? Or well, yeah, I could I could open that up. See, because I can look in all of them. <laughs> <clears throat> sorry, sorry. No, oh, no, that's the wrong one. I'm in the wrong spot. So, uh, Storm Knights, Possibility War, and Re uh, Rios. That one. Okay. Did you did you manage me out? It's making me log back in again. What the game? Yeah. Okay, that's awfully strange. All right. So the glory event, um, the Heart of Ukon, one act, scene three, the Lost Spire. Once the fight against the vaporized Adenos war leader One-Eye was complete and the Adenos had broken and ran for their lives, the PC scored a glory on a persuasion test against the Spire Guardian to convince it to give Rios the heart of Ukon. All the players were allowed to participate in helping to write what Rios would say, so all achieved an extra possibility for working together so well. Rios die roll with a drama card, a possibility, and an up condition achieved by how well uh, they work together to both make the moral choice to not destroy the Spire Guardian and in writing the persuasion allowed Rios to reach exactly 60 on her die roll. The glory was played, though this ended the adventure in success. Okay, so uh, when we do go to draw cards, each of you will get five cards instead of four, and this is for the entire one act that you're getting ready to play in, and uh, each of you uh, is allowed to have four possibilities instead of three. Now, if you've got more, more than four possibilities, don't increase anything. If, if you've got four or more, I should say, don't increase anything, but if you're below, and I don't think any of you are, nope. Nope, none of you are, so you're all okay. But when we go to dole out cards, it'll be five cards instead of four. Fair enough? Okay. Fair. Let's see, that was Catherine. Okay, Justin, what do you remember? Any, do you have anything to add? Like the other said, they met me on the beach as I was 
at greater risk with the reality we were moving into considering the tech that I carry, mm -hmm. as well as to leave a radio beacon behind as well for communication with the outside world. Mm -hmm. After fighting a group of bad guys, we moved in further and uh, we met Darius, another member of the group, and then proceeded to reach, um, after some trials and travails, reach the Guardian and deal with more as a part of distracting the bad guys on our way in at the tower, I actually disguised myself as the main bad guy to draw off as many of the bad guys as possible. And that is what I remember. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Remington, what do you think? You want to give it a shot? I mean, honestly, just about everything was already uh, pretty much covered very well by uh, everyone. Okay. So I'm honestly, not sure what I can add. Well, okay, good point. Uh, so let me thank all of you for remembering the things that you did do did remember. After all, I, I counted up the number of days since last we played, and it was forty nine days from the end of the last adventure to today. So I don't know about all of you, but I'm I'm completely stoked to get started. Um, so, is there anything any of you have in mind to take care of uh, prior to actually beginning? Bueller? Not that I can think of. Okay. Ah. Um, there's, there's nothing that I need to take care of, but there was one thing that I wanted to bring up for the group. Mm -hmm. And that was um, when we come face to face with undead, because I'm sure it's going to happen eventually. Um, Myself, as a gamer, I always think of clerics as having two primary functions, healing and wrecking undead. And so when I built Darius, that's how I spec'd him. He's a healer, and he wrecks undead. So when, when we come up against undead, Darius will definitely, um, you know, pick up his weight and, and carry it well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No spoilers. No spoilers, Paul. Don't give them any spoilers. I don't know if we're going to you know, in this adventure. I'm just saying that it's it, it's inevitable. I mean, Isle has them, Arorsch has them, and then the Gosbog count as undead. So well, yeah, the Gosbog all count as supernatural undead. So yeah, yeah. It, it... <laughs> I, I just wanted to bring it to the group's attention that that's that that's really what Darius's uh, focus is is both healing and wrecking undead. Okay, there you go. Katsumi, steel, strategic transfer of equipment to alternate locations. I like that. Do you come up with acronyms all the time? No, that one I uh, had to look it up, actually. I got the idea from the bad electrician on YouTube. Can, can you hear me now? Hey, is that a ginger? Yeah, uh, if you kind of want to look through your characters and go, hey, I forgot I had that. I want to use that. You know, that's a good idea. And and keep handwritten notes. I, I realize the younger folks that are here, like 22 or 23 and below, um, are going to have difficulty pulling out paper and a pencil. But paper and pencil is far better than anything you can do on a computer. So, and and for us older folks, I know that we... we kind of agree with that at least <laughs> um so that's older folks for you all right so um does anybody have hmm. any questions again before i uh get into the narrative for this evening okay all right let's see if my reading voice is ready to go <clears throat> Sir Fisk promised you some time to rest, and after the first week and a half, you've received what you felt was a good enough rest, and perhaps you're becoming restless to get back out there and do some good. 
The news you've heard hasn't helped this past 10 days as you watch segments from around the world, over half of them related to the war, half of the remainder related to stories close to the war, food and water shortages, hospitals sharing supplies around the world with those whose means of manufacturing has been cut off, how children and ords are faring in the steadily declining economy, transportation lanes being cut off as the seven realities now known to have subjugated seven uh, massive locations locations on the earth, whole geographical regions across core earth, and more, and the remainder of the news uh, stories related to smaller, less onerous subjects designed to aid in calming the populace as much as possible. Where much of this news is serving more to unfortunately depress the public, it has worked more, perhaps, to boil your blood. J uh, let me check this, uh, this note real quick. Okay, gotcha. Fat electrician. Okay, uh, Justin, I'll look at that later. Uh, let's see. Just as restlessness is beginning to peak for you, Sir Fisk summons you to a briefing concerning the tiles you retrieved from Wuhan's dig site in Indiana last month. And and for those of you who weren't there for the Indiana dig site, uh, since you're part of the team now, he summons you as well. And they can run over kind of, well, we've already run over kind of what happened during that period. From the location you come, rather than being transported to the Ronald Reagan, which, you're told, has been steaming for the Yucatan the past week or so, you make the journey to Houston, Texas, which is the nominal head of the new United States government. Sir Fisk explains the only headway made on the tiles thus far is that you, as the original group of knights, sent to suss out the tiles in the first place, will have to find the temple, somewhere in India, to find out the rest of what the council is unable to break, meaning you must move to secure the possibility chalice. Within hours of being rejoined with your fellow knights and receiving the briefing concerning a trip to the Indian region, within the bounds of the reality of Arorsh, you are on your way. Victorian separatists may be contacted once there for supplies and any information the council can impart to aid you Though Fisk believes the most information to be had is what the Council has already been able to unearth and share with trusted associates the Earth Round, which includes you. Unfortunately, this is not much information. Recalling your recent run-ins with werewolves in Selikap, Indonesia, and at the Parkhurst residence, he explains you should protect your silver by all means available to you legally. Silver is, na silver is a commodity in as high a demand as copper right now, especially in the realm of Arorsh. And if you're found by authorities, even those aligned with the council, to be carrying silver, it will be confiscated for use in the war, despite your status as storm knights and any agreements with their governments uh, there to provide silver as the council finds itself able to do. As for other tools you might think of to use, acquisition will better be done where the tools are used the most, en route to the town of Tezpur, nearest to a temple widely acknowledged as that where the destiny map is most likely to have been taken from by uh, Stevenson in the late 18th century. There, Fisk says, you should be able to hire a guide, perhaps one of the local hunters, to lead you to the temple and, hopefully, the location of the Possibility Chalice, long before Wuhan or any of the other culprits can arrive. He mentions it would be best if you were long gone before they arrive, and that, if the Council could free up anyone, of, uh, anyone to aid you, your knights would certainly have that help. Now, are there any questions before I go on? Okay. Three days by flights, including seaplane, to the Bay of Bangladesh and into Chattagram on the coast brings you to the beginning of your Asian continental leg. On most coasts, the sea breeze helps to tamp the heat down a bit, while here it seems rather oppressive, the sun breaking through thick clouds in rare moments, mixed wind and rain, the heat bringing the stickiness of the humidity as high as can be expected in the climate. Still, there are many who call Chattagram their home, Chittagram, I'll get that right, I promise, their home and refuse to leave it, regardless whomever runs their lives on any given day or how nasty the temperatures and humidity may become. Now, of course, you guys can go to the, to like the ocean, Ch uh, Chittagram is on the Bay of Bangladesh. It's, it's right there. So you have all kind, and it's a, it's a gateway 
to the rest of the continent as far as goods and services go. So I've got a note here that says, let's go shopping. Now, I know many of you are like, well, you know, the, the whole shopping thing is not always your, your cup of tea. However, um, in this case, I think shopping is going to be a good thing. Now, any questions before we go shopping? Okay. Uh, I, I would. Where do I find the logs for how much money we have on our character sheets? Okay. I forget what part of the character sheet that's on. Um, don't worry about how much money you have. You have the wealth perk, so you you get a lot of money. Okay, like ten thousand dollars per adventure. Okay, so you've been you've been in here since pretty much the beginning of. Uh, Relics of Power 1, the Destiny map, uh, and there's been two adventures intervening. You should have, I believe it's 29 grand. Now, let me look up and, and give you some kind of a, uh, Rios, uh, some kind of a, a trick to that. Okay, uh, on your character, and this is for all of you if, if you want to go ahead and open your characters, uh, go to the gear tab on the right hand side and then you can scroll down uh, it's gonna look like a dollar a green dollar sign imposed over the Delphi Council brown symbol and Rios for you you should probably have about twenty eight thousand three hundred ninety seven dollars instead of just eight thousand three hundred ninety seven dollars um, for the rest of you um, I'm, I'm gonna say you probably make about three grand a month okay so that it's it's gonna be while while the wealth perk may be per adventure um, and, and actually, this would apply to Rios as well. Uh, if each of you were mm -hmm. making about three grand a month, oh, good lord, it's month six, so uh, about eighteen grand. Okay, well, actually, minus Rich your first people. month. Yeah, tell me about it. Um, so actually, the first month, since you were brand new characters, you probably didn't make that much. Okay. Um, money in this game is going to be it, it can be somewhat nebulous um but you know put down say put down the 18 grand and then for rios just add 20 grand on top of that okay um and you're welcome I don't have that uh let's see that's gordon right let's see yes, i don't have that at all darius gear uh let me find it uh, and I will check yours, Jason, in just a minute because if if uh, if uh, Gordon didn't have it, then you may not. Okay, so uh, Gordon, I don't I... either. Okay, I'll so take care. So you're saying the Delphi Council actually pays us? The, the Delphi Council kind of has to pay you. Um, you're like the most major commodity possible. Um, I may figure out an actual pay scale. Um, but we need to discuss how how we're going to make experience work in the game also. And I typed something up in the Discord chat. Uh, now, version 1.5 of the Torg rules are being worked on now. And I have it on good authority that there are going to be different recommendations. Uh, you know, like several different options that a GM can choose from for things like experience in this game. And, and that's why I wanted to ask the question, what you guys think uh, we should do about experience. So I put that into the, uh, into the chat on Discord, and I would really, 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 really appreciate uh, more input. Uh, Gordon has already given me his input, which I thought was brilliant. <coughs> hint, hint. But um, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking I want to hear from the rest of you about what you think. Um, uh, Ginger, you know uh, original Torque. Okay, you know that everything was based on possibilities, and, and that's something that I I've been talking about, kind of getting back to in in that area. So, 
any of you who are familiar with original Torg should remember that it, it was powered by possibilities, not experience points and possibilities. So uh, now let me get to, uh, so I need Watanabe and I need Tomislav. Okay, gear. Okay, let me get that back. And there's tech. Okay, and don't forget you can edit these. I, I would recommend editing the top line of these. Uh, so, Tomislav, you've got yours. And then Katsumi, here's yours. And, oh no, you have yours. Yours is there. Uh, it says you've got uh, $24. Add 18000 to that. <laughs> Now, does anyone not have their money marked down? Uh -huh. Okay, so you said to add 18000 to the amount of cash that we've got, yes? Yes, that's for everyone. Okay. And then since Rios has the wealth perk, she gets to add another 20000 Yeah, what? So, uh, all right, now, uh, for going shopping, if you guys want to go shopping at all, and I, I'm, I'm going to trust you on this, uh, to, to reduce your money or, or to ask me for persuasion rolls to get equipment or whatever, um, uh, I'm just going to kind of show you where things are and, and let you go from there. Now, for all of you, uh, unless somebody ahems me to ask a question, uh, toward the upper right hand portion, upper right hand corner of the uh, of the canvas, uh, you have all of those icons uh, in a row, in a horizontal row, and the um, second to last one on the right, when you take your cursor over the top of it, says Compendium Packs. Go ahead and click on that, and then once that opens, click on zero one. Possibility War Cosms, okay, and then you'll have all of your Cosms listed under that. Now, you can purchase equipment from up to three places. Your Home Cosm, Core Earth, or at the very top of the list, At Core Game. Okay, I would recommend kind of going in reverse. So say you're from Tharkold, you would up, open up Tharkold, look at your gear list, see what you like, and, and just, you know, just subtract the cash. Um, and then go to, say, Core Earth, since you've been a lot in Core Earth recently. Uh, and then to, uh, uh, then you could go to at Core Game at the very top, which is probably going to have the most stuff because that's stuff that can be found around the world for all cosms. Okay, Core. Remember, Core Earth is its own cosm. So, but since you spend most of your time in Core Earth, you can do that now. If you look at the technology level or the tech level on any of that equipment. If you take any equipment that is higher than your technological axiom and you have to make a reality test uh, or else you disconnect, if you have something that is above your tech level, uh, it will be a four case contradiction. So if you roll a one through four on the D20, you disconnect as opposed to say using uh, equipment that is equal to or below your technology level on that character, it would only be a one case. So if you roll a one on a d20, you disconnect. Any questions? I have one. Sure. There is one particular item that is an aisle, but I don't see why it wouldn't be in core or even in cyber papacy. Mm -hmm. I don't see it listed anywhere else, and that is lock picks. Uh, core game should have the lock picks in there. Hold on, general. It'll be under general. Yeah, lock picks are a tech ten item that are also in core game. I don't know why they're also in aisle. They should just be in core game. So, if you want to grab those real quick, go ahead, and then I'll just uh, delete them from the aisle. Cause them. 
um, unless there's some specificity to them. No, general. Yeah, they're not in the general. Where where did you find them in? Uh, are are you just yeah, looking at? I was like looking at gear in the rule book. I popped open the rule book and went okay. down to gear and was looking through it through that oh, method. It's under core game gear yeah. general. Yeah, yeah. I I've I've uh, I've kind of parsed. Yeah, I've kind of parsed everything out in Foundry so that it's there. And I, I think exactly like you think that uh, lockpicks should be a worldwide thing. Okay, so they're under core game in, in Foundry. Um, and besides, uh, the reason that I, I would like you to use the, the stuff in Foundry is because there's cards for everything. So you can actually left click and drag the card over to your character and it'll be there with all of its information from the book. Okay. Uh, I have not entered everything from the books yet. I am working on it. But uh, this last several weeks has been really, really difficult to get anything done. So... I, I also wanted to remind everyone that there's a um, there's a card uh, line that might come up that will force a contradiction check, and that is surge. Yes. If if surge comes up on the conflict line, then that means you need to roll a reality check, and you might do a you might have contradictions based on the gear you're carrying. Actually, for surge, it's just a d20. So if you roll a one case, which is a one, or a four case, one through four. Uh, on a d20 it's not i i apologize about saying it was a reality test it's it's not really the reality test comes if you disconnect because at the beginning of the next round or the beginning of the next second or whatever you automatically get a free uh test to reconnect okay gordon thank you for bringing that up you're absolutely right so oh sorry i i'm behind here did you house rule contradictions because of what you described where can I find the explosive? <laughs> Those will be under heavy weapons and explosives. Uh, and I think you'll find them under O'Rourke, but I'm not sure for for you. The oh, only boy, tab that is under heavy weapons and explosives is melee weapons. I'm forbidden I... from purchasing dynamite. I, <laughs> as, as it should be. <laughs> All right. So see Commendium Packs. I mean, I'm seeing Then now go to Cosmos. Then you go to Orosh. Then you go to Gear. Then you go down. Scroll, scroll. I do have a question real quick. Uh, sure. You. Sure, what's going on? Oh, are, the yeah, I found are the purchases it. only the restricted track. to weapons, or could I also buy like another uh, occult oh, wait, tech needed. additive? Um, Just like one. Okay. Uh, in order to get uh, cyberware or a call tech or anything like that, you actually have to take the perk a second time. That basically, well, okay. yeah. yeah, that basically says that you you found a chop shop somewhere and got new tech installed. Okay, all right, I got you. So just uh, wanted to check and make sure. Okay, all right. So, uh, so, Catherine, you found it, or actually, yes. actually, Connor found it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he found it for me. Okay. Uh, I can now acquire dynamite. <laughs> What's the limit on that? Um, yeah, yeah, Miss Moneybags over there is in charge of all bribes. Uh, so, so, <laughs> <laughs> so let me uh, let me just say you this. Me the dynamite stick. Let me just say this about acquiring the dynamite sticks. The more dynamite you have, the more opportunity I have to. Uh, destroy your character. Oh, those are new. Gunner and skill at the bottom. Wow. I think those are supposed to be... Oh, the heavy weapons are supposed to be for the forthcoming vehicles. Well, I... Using the suitcase up in the top right-hand corner, I'm still running into the challenge of not being able to see anything other than the torpedo pistol. But when I... It's not the suitcase. Yeah, yeah, no, you don't, you're not going to the suitcase. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. In the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you've got a bunch of icons there. The second one from the right, well, I don't know, the, the collapse and expand thing, do we consider that a an icon? Uh, the Okay, on the very far right, you're going to have an arrow that's pointing to the right. 
To the left of that, you're going to have a pair of gears. To the left of that, you're going to have what looks kind of like, uh, I'm going to, ref uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to refer to that particular icon for compendium packs um, as a, like a handheld computer. Um, it looks like a pad. So you've clicked on the compendium packs. Now go down to where it has the yin-yang symbol with the torque colors in it, and it says 01 Possibility War Cosms. Click on that. I have it already. I found it. Okay. Uh, now, are you still unable to see certain things? No, I'm fine. Okay. All right. So, um, for certain things, uh, I, I would like to put in some GM approval if we can. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yes. I was going to ask mm -hmm. um, about healing potions. Okay, those are in aisle gear. Uh, I'm not sure if I put in the healing potions yet or not. Yes, healing yeah. potions. Okay, let me pop those open. Let's see, requires magic axiom 13 plus to work. Drinking the potion is a simple action. Um, those are, uh, again, those are like 500 each. And, and I've got 18,000. So. Okay, and, and there will be a limitation. Um, oh, yeah, I was only going to get like two. Oh. Well, yeah, grab two. Okay. I, I was going to say I could roll a D6 or a D10 to <laughs> determine how many potions there are, but I'll, I'll let you go with two. No, I, was, I, I just wanted to run it past you uh, so that it wasn't coming out of the blue. Now, the question for that is, do you drag that over twice, or do you modify the healing potion uh, top line to say that there are two? Try and drag it over twice. And see what you get. That way, it's easier to keep track of. I think. Yeah, I did it twice, so I've got I've got the line entry twice. Rock on. Okay. All right. So that works. Um, okay. So you're down a thousand bucks. You still got seventeen grand. What do you want to do? <laughs> I bought some rope. Other than that, I think I'm good. Okay. Which probably. Great. Uh, I think you're probably good too. Now, if you guys want to talk it through and see who would pick up what for the sake of carrying purposes, you can do that as well. Actually, I, I think I want a flare gun and okay. flares. Okay. Um, I, I know it can only take one shot, but... Um, but it gives it you six says, flares. Yeah, it comes with six flares. Mm -hmm. uh, they, each, they each only burn for 30 seconds, mm -hmm. um, and it can do... And it only does a damage 10, yeah. but... The flares burn at 4,000 degrees, so there's very little it can set on fire, uh, that it can't set on fire. I that mean. it can't, and, yeah. Uh, and uh, um, it does a continuous 16 plus 1 uh, bonus dice of damage per round, and it and it lasts for 30 seconds. That's a lot of rounds. Yeah, that's 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 three rounds right there, so you can't uh, can't go wrong with that. Um, so yeah, yeah, if you want to if you want to get that flare gun, I don't have a problem with it. It also has a, a, it also is small. It's small, easy to hide. So ser searches suffer a minus two penalty to find the weapon if it's hidden. Correct. Sounds so, good to me. Uh, so uh, down in my boot, it goes. What? Okay. So <laughs> it's, well, it, it's, it's, you know, it's not hanging out or banging up against my hip like, uh, like a gunslinger. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. No problem. Uh, oh, and the the um, the cone at the end of the flare gun is not necessarily truly representative of a core earth flare gun. Okay, I just haven't put one in there yet. <laughs> uh, the price value it says is twenty five. So how much does that translate into dollars? Well, twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks. That's okay. for the whole set. Um, <laughs> If, you, if you'll notice right above that, it says price slash value. So the top box is going to be 25 bucks, basically, and then the value at 7 Okay. Um, can I get any extra flares instead of just... Uh, yeah, tech 20. Uh, the flares themselves are tech 20. So a fla And they're only a few lines above the flare gun and flares. Uh, flare may be struck to light it, either as carried or dropped to provide light. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. If carried, the wielding character's player rolls 1d20 at the beginning 
Okay, no, that's a different kind of flare. So let's see, flare gun and flare. Oh, uh, the flare gun is expensive, and each flare round costs five bucks a piece. Okay, and they may be fired into the air. That's under your actual flare gun and flares itself. So the oh, only th I see. Yeah, the only thing I ask you to do is keep a good track on that, please. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to. It, you said it came with. It yeah, it comes with a certain number of. Oh, I closed it comes with a certain number of flares. Hold on just a minute. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Flare gun and flares. Uh, do, 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 found in the Day One Adventure Anthology with damage 10. Uh, f specials, fire and small. Oh, I apologize. I guess that is just for the flare gun. The 25 bucks for the flare gun, and then each flare is 5 bucks on its own. Okay, I, right. I thought it was a set of 6 with the flare gun, but no... That that would be incorrect. Okay, that would make it like I don't know, uh, thirty, fifty. That would make it fifty-five. So, how many flares do you want to purchase? I would recommend a maximum, absolute maximum of ten, uh, unless you're like planning to shoot everything in my game with flares. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I I was actually thinking only six. That, so. There you go. There you go. Uh, yeah. So, so that's an additional thirty dollars plus the twenty-five. Gotcha. Correct. Okay, so let me kind of start cycling through, folks. Um, uh, Chris, uh, do you have the things that you want to get, or do you have questions? Uh, I mean, there's one thing I'm kind of interested in. Mm-hmm. Which is the uh, like machete for uh, and it gives you a van of favored or whatever like survival checks. Yes, but I've already have a, quite a few like bladed weapon. <laughs> you know, I have two bladed weapons already. Well, now if so I'm I not mistaken, like... one of those bladed weapons was from uh, Trail of the Dead, which is already a machete, right? Yeah. Uh no. Oh, you got rid of it, huh? Well, that's oh, fine. I don't have a machete as part of my inventory. Oh, okay. Well, uh, any survival kit that you have will make survival favored for you anyway. So you don't necessarily need a machete. Although you are going to India. And that's why I was interested in it. Okay, so let's see. Core game. Where's the gear? Okay. Uh, melee weapons. So let's see, where is it? Machete. Tech 22. How many of you would like to pick up machetes? I think I, I had better because I do have an electric katana, but I hear jungle's not very good for electricity things. No. <laughs> no, it's not. So it, it's probably just going to, the, the, the katana's just probably going to be strapped to my back. And uh, I will be using the machete. So I want a machete. How much are they? Okay, I they are. are... Uh huh. Price value eight forty. Uh, and I mean, you know, 40 price dollars? forty, but the range eight or whatever. I uh, the the value of it is eight. Um, let me kind of show y'all something here. Uh, uh, value measure conversion. Show players, and I, I'll just show all of you. Okay, you should see value of measure conversion there. Along the left-hand side, you should see value measure logarithm chart. Okay. So, if if you kind of scroll down, if you click on value measure logarithm chart in the table of contents, and then you scroll down to, uh, how much was that machete? 80? 80, yeah. Okay, no, 40. Uh, yeah, it's just 40 and a value of 8. Yeah. So if, if you look at the measure column and you find 40, that's how much it costs in dollars. And then if you look to the left, you'll find the value, which is 8. Well, um, how do you – can you drag and drop this? How do you – Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, if you're in the melee weapons worldwide – uh, down at the bottom is the machete. You can left click and drag it onto your sheet. Uh, 
There so we go. Get, getting a machete is probably not a bad idea. Uh, you know, uh, they had uh, the survival kits for uh, the various cosms, or, or mm -hmm. at least uh, available for some of them. Do they have a survival kit for Orosh? You know what? It's time to crack the cover on my Orosh book. I just got this <laughs> book uh, last week, and I want to look at it. So let's see. Oh, they had boy. the first cyber papacy and living land. You oh. know, the living land was a whole bunch of camping gear. The uh, cyber one included some kind of uh, LED goggles. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's not in the actual book. The, the Yorosh book does not specify a Delphi Council survival kit. Okay. Oh. Uh, what's the tech level uh, for Orosh? Hang on, and I can look that up real quick. The tech of Orosh is 18. 18. What is the tech on the living land or the standard kit? Uh, hang on just a minute. Living land is six. What's that? Living land's tech is six. Yeah, I know. There's a... Okay, let me go to items. Oh, somebody's trying to chat with me. Five sticks of dynamite. <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The left, right as I was hitting send on the left. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was nice knowing all of you. <laughs> okay, so um, I was looking up gear. Okay, so I've got equipment, gear equipment. Uh, the living land is tech six and it doesn't have it in. I'm probably going to have to go here, aren't I? Okay, core game well, it gear. Says that the Delphi Council survival kit for the Living Land is Tech Twenty One. Yes, yes, it does. Um, that's that's a general survival kit, though. That's not actually the Living Land survival kit. It's it's right. a misnomer in the book. Um, We're um, destined not. Is is that a hint? We're not going to survive. This? <laughs> Absolutely. We don't, um, <laughs> we don't need no stinking survival kits. Okay. It wouldn't help you anyway. Okay, I've got the DC Nile Empire Desert Survival Kit in Core Earth here, and the DC Survival Kit, which are 20 and 21. Okay, but I'm not seeing the one for... Okay, let me get this open. Uh, so, Core Game, Gear, General Worldwide. Now, let me get back to the items here. I do not understand why these have not been pulled over there yet. DC Survival Kit... Okay, so you're going to look under DC Nile Empire Survival Kit under Tech 20, Tech 21. I'm going to remove these from here so that I don't double up the information. And then why is the Living Land one not good? Anyway, would you want a Living Land one for a Rorsch? No. No. But I, it would work. It might. So you know what I'm you know what I need to do? Um, I need to make a note about making survival kits for each of the uh, each of the realities. I figured that they would have continued that uh, tradition, if you will. Now, how about this? I'll make you all a deal. Um, I will work this week to make survival kits for each of the realities based on equipment that goes with uh, within the axioms of that reality and then I'll put them into the appropriate um, uh, realm they're supposed to go into in the compendiums and next week you can buy them even if you're already on the road. Fair enough? Yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Oh, sure, I lost uh, yeah, my fair. Where's the uh, flare gun? Hold on. The uh, you lost the flare gun. Yeah, I meant to. Um, I had gone on and I closed it up, and now the when I go to uh, the items list, like a suitcase, it doesn't look the same. Okay, because it was on your sheet. Yeah. Did you accidentally delete it? Uh, I don't know what I did. Because once it Sorry. goes on your sheet, it's on your sheet. I, I have some flares, but I, I used those in the caves when we were down underneath. All of them? Aisle. I don't think so. But those aren't the ones that'll fit in the gun. No, that's that's right. So do you... Oh, wrong keyboard, Paul. 
Uh, so do you remember how many you would have used? Uh, I used at least four of them. Okay, so we'll say that you've got two left. Uh, and, uh, two. Fla yes, I can spell flares. No, really. Two flares remaining. Tab. And let me change this because it doesn't need to be there anymore. see okay leave that there that's perfect okay so you're you just have to to drag the flare gun back over and list the number of flares you've got yeah but uh... okay so it'll be in the compendium um, yeah com uh, it'll be under core game gear general worldwide okay. Core, you said? Yes. Core, uh, core game. Oh, general worldwide. I was looking under, for some reason, I was looking under firearms. Going. Uh, and okay, then... Here, here, here it is. Yeah. You got it? Okay. Yeah, I found it again. Doi. Okay. Now, let me try and get back on track here uh, so that I can figure out where we're at. Um, Chris, did I finish with you? Did you figure out what you wanted?